Okay, this first section in chapter 7 is an introduction to mathematical logic, or uh, also referred to as Boolean logic or Boolean algebra. Um, the main mathematical object that we're working with here in our in the context of logic is a statement. Um, so logic is basically, and this is one of many, many ways to define logic, but you know, I'll say logic is a systematic way of thinking that allows us to deduce new information from known information. Um, the, the primary mathematical object that we're going to be working with is the statement. Now a statement is a declarative sentence or a mathematical expression a mathematical expression is basically um, the equivalent of a statement in English uh, and the key here is that is either true or false but not both so a, a, a statement are only are only sentences that have a well-defined constant truth value either true or false uh, if a uh, if it not a if a if a statement in English is not a statement in mathematical logic, we say it's an open sentence, a sentence that could be uh, either true or false, depending on one of the parameters or one of the variables. Uh, for example, a, a, an open sentence would be uh, something like, the next dog you see is white. Well, that's true if the next dog you see is white and false if the next dog you see is not white. You know, let's say brown. So an open sentence has a uh, the, the potential to be both true or false, uh, just not at the same time. Uh, mathematically speaking, uh, the x plus x equals 2x, this is a statement. It happens to be true, but being true is not necessary uh, for an expression to be a statement or an equation to be a statement. The second one x plus y equals 7, well that's that's an open sentence because well it depends on what the values of x and y are. If x is 2 and y is 5 it's a true statement, if x is 3 and y is 6 it's a false statement. So this x plus y equals 7, this is sometimes true, sometimes false, depending on the values of x. Uh, so here's some examples, uh, are these logical statements in the mathematical sense. Uh, number one, negative five is a rational number. Well, rational numbers are uh, all positive and negative whole numbers and fractions and zero. So yes, negative five can be written as a fraction, sure. We could say negative five over one, or there's a, that's a fraction. <coughs> Excuse me. So yes, that's a statement. Uh, number two, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 equals A, B, C, D. Well, this is not true, because 0 is not the same as A, and 1 is not the same as B, and so on. So this is false, but being false has nothing to do with whether or not it's a statement. Remember, a statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. So yes, this is a statement. The first, uh, the first sentence is a true statement. The second statement, the second sentence is a false statement, but they're both statements. Uh, the third one, call me Eric. Well, commands and questions are not statements. They don't have a well-defined truth value. So, call me Eric. That's a command. That is not a statement. On the other hand, my name is Eric. Well. I'm speaking right now and my name happens to be Eric, so yes, this is a true statement. Uh, this test is too hard. Well, again, opinions cannot be statements because depending on who's saying this, sometimes it's true, sometimes it's false, depending on if the person saying it thinks it's the test is too hard. So uh, commands, questions, opinions, they are not statements. Uh, do you like the color red? Uh, like I just mentioned, questions, not statements. Uh, the sky is always red. Well, the sky is not red all the time, but it has a well-defined truth value. The statement, the sky is always red, or the sentence, the sky is always red, is false. So it is a, 
that is a mathematical statement, it happens to be a false mathematical statement. Uh, now this last one, July 4th is on a Thursday. Now, is that a statement? The question is, is it always true or is it always false or can it potentially be both? This one's a little bit tricky but it turns out this is not a statement because it's sometimes true, sometimes false, depending on what year it is. If I were to say July 4th, 2017 was on a Thursday, well, that's a statement, because in the year 2017, it either was or it wasn't, not both. But here, July 4th is on a Thursday, well, sometimes July 4th falls on a Thursday, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, now here, give the truth value of the following statements. So these are, all, we already know their statements. Uh, give the truth value. First one, uh, there exists a rational number that is an integer. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, from a few slides back, we saw I used the number negative uh, five in an example. And negative five is a rational number and it's also an integer. The absolute value of any real number is positive. The absolute value of any real number is positive. Well, what does absolute value do? Absolute value takes a negative and makes it positive, or takes a positive and keeps it positive. Uh, so maybe this is a true statement. But then we have to consider the number zero. Zero is a real number. If we take the absolute value of zero, we get zero, which is not positive. So here we have the absolute value of a real number. We do not get something positive. We get zero. So this one, false. And sometimes you run into situations like this last one. All even numbers greater than two can be written as the sum of two primes. So, for example, 8 is an even number greater than 2. It could be written as prime plus a prime. Or 24, that's an even number. That could be written as 19 and 5. Uh, also, 17 and 7, two prime numbers. Uh, but it turns out this last statement, we don't know. I mean, it, it, it either is or it isn't true, but it turns out that in the last five or six hundred years, no mathematician in the world has ever been able to prove this statement to be either true or false. We could use, and thinking back to chapter one, we could use inductive reasoning. I just gave you two examples where an even number could be written as a prime plus a prime, and I could give you 10 more examples or 100 more examples or even 100,000 more examples. But that's an example of inductive reasoning that does not prove the statement to be always true. So in this case, we don't know. Uh, the uh, name for this, this is actually called Goldbach's Conjecture. It's one of the one of the most famous unproven statements in mathematics. So is it a statement? We know we don't need to know if it's true or false to know it's a statement, but just based on the based on this the, the the sentence itself, it's declaring something. So all even numbers greater than two can be written as a sum of two primes it has to be one or the other. It's, it, it's got to be true or false. A sentence like this cannot be both. So is it a statement? Yes. Is it true or false? Well, no one knows. Most mathematicians suspect that it's true, but there's been no verification just yet. Uh, and now, just like when you're learning numbers as a four-year-old, or five-year-old, or six-year-old, you learn how to count first and then you learn how to combine numbers. You start off with addition and subtraction and then you learn multiplication. After that you learn division. So you have all these binary operations that you learn. Um, now in the context of logic, a compound statement is, be, is uh, 
a, a statement formed by connecting uh, simple statements. And an example, and we haven't defined these uh, symbols yet, but an example of a compound statement would be something like this, where A, B, C, A, B, and C are individual statements. Uh, we'll, more on this uh, a little bit later. Now the logical connectives, this is our, our logical equivalent of arithmetic operations, our logical equivalent of like plus minus times divide, negative signs. Um, the, uh, the one that's not in the textbook but it's worth throwing in there, the exclusive or, so we have the negation and this works um, like a negative sign and the uh, the conversational equivalent of the, the operation negation is the word not. We have conjunction, this works like the word and. Disjunction works like the word or. This exclusive or, if you do any computer programming, you're, you might be familiar with this X or. It's basically one or the other, but not both. Uh, the conditional is an if then statement. And the biconditional is an if and only if statement. Now we'll define these one at a time, and we'll we'll sort of unpack how each one of them works um, when combining simple statements into compound statements. Now, besides the logical operators, we have these things called quantifiers. So a quantifier is is basically a propositional function. Proposition is another word for statement. So it's a logical function that binds it to a proposition or to a statement with some semantic value. Um, there's two general types of quantifiers. We have existential and we have universal. So existential, it expresses the existence of something. So uh, for an existential quantifier, for example, there exists some, at least one, etc. It, it doesn't tell you how many, it just tells you the existence of something. Um, if I'm in a classroom with 20 students and I said at least one of you took the train today, well, at least one could refer to one or two or three or four or all, or all the way up to or 20. It's just basically anything other than zero. But in that same classroom with 20 students, if I said every student in the room took the train today, well, that's referring to exactly 20 students, if there's 20 students in the room. If I said um, none of the students in this room took a taxi today, that's exactly zero. So the universal quantifiers are the zero and the everything and the existential quantifiers are everything in between. So, all right, let me go back to the last slide. Our, our symbol, let me use blue here, our symbol for an existential quantifier, uh, this backwards E is read there exists, and this upside down A is read for all, or for every. So. An existential quantifier is like a disjunction over the entire universe of statements. So this is saying there exists an x such that p of x is true. So it's basically saying p of the first x or p of the second x or p of the third x dot dot dot. This could be a finite string of ors, uh, disjunctive statements, or it could be infinite. And the uh, universal quantifier is like a conjunction over the entire universe. So it's for every x, p of x is true. So this is saying p of 1 is true, and p of 2 is true, and p of 3, and dot dot dot. It could be, again, infinite or finite. So uh, recall the difference between a statement and an open sentence. A statement has a well-defined truth value. It's a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. Open sentence could be one or the other, depending on the parameters or the inputs. So this first one, the, the English language, the English alphabet has 62 letters. That's a statement. It's false. The English alphabet has 26 letters, but being false 
it has nothing to do with whether or not it is a statement. This is a statement. Um, if x is an even number, then x is equal to 2 times n for some uh, z is the symbol for integers, so for some n in the set of integers. So basically, then, if x is even, then x could be written as a multiple of 2, would be another way of, of stating this. That's true. Definition of an even number. Even numbers are multiples of 2. And then down here, this third one, x plus 3 is positive. Well, that's your p of x. That's a, a, a propositional function or a logical function. It's true sometimes, it's false sometimes. So if uh, x equals 5, it's true. 5 plus 3 is positive. If x equals negative 5, it's false. Negative 5 plus 3 is not positive. So let's work with open sentences for a bit in the context of universal and existential quantifiers. So when I said, and let me go back a few slides, a quantifier is placed in front of a propositional function and binds it to a proposi proposition with a semantic value. What I mean here by it binds it to obtain a proposition or a statement. So when you take an open sentence and you connect it with a quantifier, you get a statement. Uh, let me give you a couple of, ex of examples uh, back to the current slide. So let's work with the open sentence for a while, uh, or for a little bit. So p of x is that that sentence x plus 3 is positive. Again, sometimes true, sometimes false. So now let's, let's bind that with first the existential quantifier and then with the universal quantifier. So if we bind that with the existential quantifier, then we're saying down here there exists some number x in the set of integers such that p of x or there exists a number x such that x plus 3 is positive that just has to happen once and I gave you the example x equals 5 so that's a true statement because it works at least one time it works many many other times infinitely many other times but for this quantified propositional function, or this quantified open sentence to be, a, uh, it is a statement because there exists at least one example where it's true. Remember, existential, there exists at least one of dot, dot, dot. Uh, but something different happens when we bind this open sentence so we're taking this open sentence, x plus 3 is positive, and we bind it with, um, uh, oh, before I move on, yeah, there, we could also say that there exists a value that makes it not true. So the examples I gave you were 5 and negative 5. Um, but when we bind this open sentence with the universal quantifier, so remember, p of x is x plus 3 is positive. So p of x just stands for an open sentence. Uh, so now, when we bind it with the for all quantifier, this is saying for all numbers, p of x is true. So for all numbers x, x plus 3 is positive. That's a false statement, because it's saying this, this statement for all so for every number x, it follows that x plus 3 is positive. So it's sort of color coded here. For every x in the set of integers, p of x, or for every number x, it follows that x plus 3 is positive. Again, this is not true. We only need one counterexample to make this false. So when x is negative 5, this is a false statement. So again, just to give a brief overview, when you take an open sentence like this 
and we bind it with either a universal quantifier or an existential quantifier, we get a statement. And depending on the open sentence that we're working with, binding it with the quantifiers give you sometimes a true statement, sometimes a false statement. Okay, so x plus 3 is positive, not a statement. For all, or uh, there exists an x such that x plus 3 is positive. So that's the open sentence bound with the existential quantifier. That's a true statement. And for all x, x plus 3 is positive. That's also a statement, but it's false. And that's the open sentence bound with the universal quantifier. And the last thing I want to talk about is negating a quantified statement. So it might make intuitive sense that, the, so the negation is the opposite. So if a statement is true, the negation is not true. And if a statement is not true, then the, the negation is true. So this first, uh, this first quantified, uh, this, this first quantified statement, all clowns are funny. Well, it might make sense to say the opposite of that is no clowns are funny. But that doesn't take into account the some of them are, some of them aren't case. So we basically have these three quantification states. We have the all, we have the none, and then we have the part. I'm going to say part of the whole. Okay, so we have three distinct states of quantification. Universal, universal, existential. So all clowns are funny, that's putting you up here. So the negation of this, if this is not true, then you would say not all clowns are funny. And that will take care of the part of the whole and the none. So if you have, let's say, there's only 10 clowns in the world, the negation or the opposite of all clowns are funny would be not 10, which would include 9 or 8 or 7 or 6 or 5 or 4 or 3 or 2 or 1 or 0. So we have, we only have two, we only have two versions of our statement, the statement itself or the negation, but they have to account for all three quantification states. So we could say, not all clowns are funny, at least one clown is not funny, some clowns are not funny, uh, something that implies either none, and in addition to that, part of the whole. Uh, next one, no dogs have wings. Same things, this is taking care of one of the three quantification states, and there's the, so the negation has to account for the other two. So the negation of no dogs have wings, we could say some dogs have wings, or at least one dog has wings. Uh, next one, some apples are purple. Now the word some, the mathematical definition of the word some is different than the conversational definition of the word some. Mathematically the word some means anything other than zero, anything other than none. So if we negate the statement, the quantified statement, some apples are purple, we get no apples are purple. And this last one, well, before I move on, this last one, at least one student will not pass this class. So again, we have, we have the all, we have the none, and in between, we have part of the whole. part of the whole. Sorry, it's a little hard to write. So our statement, at least one student will not pass the class. Well, that's taking care of these two quantification states. At least one means one or more, one or more, which includes part of the whole and all. So the negation or the opposite of this statement would be down here, this would be our negation, the none case. So, no students will not pass the class 
uh, it's a uh, it's not really um, it's not really proper to use a double negative like that so no students will not pass the class or all students will pass the class okay that about does it for the first section in the next section we'll get a little bit more technical and we'll go back and define all of these logical connectives introduced in this chapter one by one and we'll do it in a sort of more general sense without using words we'll just use based on the truth values true or false um, how does the word and work when you combine two truth values with an and or how does the word or work when you combine two truth values with an or so we'll go through that systematically one by one um, and that'll take us through most of the next section. Okay, that's it for now.